everybody, this is Brian, and this is just a quick video update. I've had a lot of people asking what I'm doing and how things are going. Well, I'm taking all the code that I have written and just testing it with Qt6. And what you see running in the background here is a Python script, which is going through and recompiling everything with CMake and then testing it, seeing if it runs. If it does run, it says, okay, great, kills it. If it doesn't run, it gets the exit code. And from there, I can actually extrapolate what's working and what's not working from Qt5 to Qt6. And there's a lot of code. I mean, I've done hundreds and hundreds of hours of Qt tutorials. So using the code from Udemy as the base here, this is really what we're focused on. I've done the beginners, intermediate, and advanced for Qt Core, uh, the design patterns class, widgets, and QML. And what you see churning away in the background here is the QML course. So it's just going through and making sure that everything runs and builds. Um, ironically, a lot of weird things here. So let's see, where do we even begin? I'm going to do a full video on, you know, all the things that I found. This is just a status update. And I'm probably going to do a very short course on, you know, how to migrate from five to six. But uh, for Qt Core for Beginners, I noticed that Q variant, you cannot really convert create a Q variant from a Q string. There are changes to Q date and time. Um, this I think is a false positive on lesson 8.3. Qt does not support inheriting multiple Q objects. Qt's never really supported that. So I think that's just a bug in my little script. Um, and then I had some hard fails like Q link list just went the way of the dinosaur, which no one really uses it anyways. Uh, Q text codec just vanished. And of course I did use the backwards compatibility module and no luck, it just simply doesn't work. A lot of Q byte array conversions, um, you have to actually, like if you're going to add a Q string, now you have to do the .utf8, again, date time, and L dot define, Q byte array again. Um, these I'm just going to redo. Um, I use singleton pattern. I'm going to use magic statics instead. Um, and then I just had some interesting little things like D pointer is now a Q scope pointer. Q sense info changed. A whole lot of changes to Q byte array. Of course, the new Q string views. I'll be covering those in depth for the advanced. Um, this was a little bit interesting. They did some changes to sockets, and that's where I ran into a lot of my issues with sockets, and it was that socket error. You have no idea what I'm talking about. Try to connect a signal and slot to a socket error, and you're going to have to do an override. It's a royal pain in the behind. So they actually fixed that and made it really cool. Um, there's some network access changes and some cute concurrent changes. This actually kind of ticked me off because I had to go deep diving into the documentation to figure out what the heck was going on. But once I read the documentation, as you should read the documentation, it actually made a lot of sense why they made those changes. And then I had some issues on lesson 1.8 with a Q string with a S print. And then 1.6, the lesson just made no sense from user feedback. Design patterns. This kind of threw me for a loop. State machine actually isn't in 6.0. You got to wait till 6.1 or later for Q state machine to come out. So none of the state machine stuff and design patterns worked. Um, QML file dialog was moved to qt.labs.platform11. And there are, of course, Q concurrent changes. Um, Q regular expression just completely stopped working. And I had to actually include some things and go back to the backwards compatibility module, which that actually worked. I was surprised. I've had not much luck with the compat with the compatibility module at all. Widgets, cute widgets. Not surprisingly, because they pretty much I don't want to say stop developing, but they've pretty much stopped developing. Uh, absolutely, very few things. Most of the problems I had were actually with core uh, date time changes, some Windows flags, and notably Q list widget item. The item is tri state no longer exists. They renamed that. And I had to actually include the Q close event. It was no longer auto included. And QML, none on. That's actually not true. I'm churning away here. I did this test once before and I had three hard fails. Um, but I wanted to do it again just so I can go through a deep dive. So what I'm doing is I'm automating these tests. And then anything that fails, I actually crack open the source code. And I manually try to compile it and figure out what's going on. So... What you can expect is I'm probably going to do a video on all of the changes that I found. I'm probably going to make a very short course out on Udemy. I may just say screw it and publish it out on YouTube of, you know, this is how you migrate from five to six. And then I'm going to start re-recording all my Qt5 stuff into Qt6. And then, yes, of course, once I'm done with all that, I will do the uh, QML Intermediate Advance and the Widgets Intermediate Advance. I've had a lot of people asking for those. Thanks for watching, and I uh, will talk to you later.